Hi. Hi. I'm Tina. And I'm Christine. We are the ladies of the Lanai. Welcome. Thanks for watching. We were going to do on the Lanai. We were, because we've got a few requests. <laughs> if you're lazy on the Lanai, how come we're not on the Lanai? And, uh, we but it's Monday and everybody's mowing their grass. It's very noisy out there. And I don't have a glass enclosed Lanai yeah. yet. Yeah. We just got ours glass enclosed, by the way. Do you like it? Yes. Yeah, I really like it. Um, it takes down on the dust and the dirt that comes inside, a little bit of noise protection and uh, hopefully temperature keeps it a little more temperate inside okay so, yeah so we're doing another edition of the villages buzz mm -hmm. and you have some important golf news yes some big golf news um regarding your your gin or your handicap so if you again you need a gin or a handicap if you ever want to play in a tournament or ever want to be able to play uh, on a fair sort of basis with other players because your handicap the handicap system allows you to, even if you're a better golfer and you're playing somebody who's a lesser golfer, the handicap helps equalize you on the, you know, when you're playing together. So not everybody has a gain or a handicap, but um, if you do, um, you may or may not know about the new updates that the World Handicap System has made that uh, for 2024, and it did take effect in January. Um, and these are these are sort of a, a really good response to the way that people are playing golf now. Um, I think that the, what they've seen is not everybody plays 18 holes championship uh, and things like that. So what's the change? One of the big changes is you, what had happened before was you had to get an 18 hole score mm. uh, in order to have that apply to your hand, update your handicap. Uh, or if you only played nine, you'd have to wait for the next time you played nine to combine those two scores to update your handicap. Right now, that's no more. If you play just nine, it's going to update. Uh, even if you play just, say, a partial round, it's going to make a um, uh, sort of a um, assumption on what you'll make you get for the rest of the round, and your handicap will update. So that's great for people who only play nine. And the big, big news, I think, also is that um, now executive courses will figure into your handicap. Uh, they have to be of a certain length course, and all the execs in the uh, in the villages have already been graded, and they already count. So if you're just an exec player or you play both, your exec score, your executive golf scores, will be able to figure in to your handicap. Of course, you have to put it in to the handicap system, but it's big news. It's um, it's it's a great um recognition by the world handicap system that not everybody's playing 18 hole championship golf all the time okay. so it's kind of a big deal all right yeah, there's a few other minor changes but those are the biggies okay yeah and then um we were going to announce that we're going to start having a a another segment a short one called yeah. um tea, tea time in tea talk in the villages <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to uh, make sure that we're always doing uh, some updates with regards to uh, things that um, golf in the villages, whether it's a little rule or a little nuance that you might not have known about or how to do something um, with regards to golfing in the villages. So we're going to make sure we keep, keep updating that all the time. So look for a tea talk in the villages. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a big part of um, village activity. Yeah. Here. And not everybody knows all the. <clears throat> right. All There's the some as big assumptions of things. Big, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we both went to Bella Vida, the new yes. restaurant in Spanish Springs. Yes, you went early on. Like... I went the first Thursday. I didn't want to be on the first day, yes. so we waited till Thursday and we went. But we liked it. Um, it was very loud. Was one thing the noise level within it? I don't know about their acoustics. Um, the service was okay. You know, they tried, but it was busy. You know, it was we had, busy. Yeah. Well. Would you sit at the bar or at a table? We sat at a table near the bar. Um, I mean, I would go back, but I'm not rushing to go back. I still, I would say Costa del Mar, I would prefer over it. But you you and Paul had a yeah. strong opinion. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We, uh, well, we're, I would say that I'm a bit of a foodie and he comes from the restaurant world. So we do tend to be a little bit critical, but we'll try and be kind. Um, the food I thought was decent. We got the uh, caprese salad, which is tomato, mozzarella, balsamic glaze, and some, you know, um, um, basil on top. I thought it was decent. And we got the um, 
asabuko, uh, which is a pork shank that the meat just falls off the bone with mesh. It was delicious. It was okay. really, really good. Um, I've never had a poor asabuco here. Um, Lopez makes a really good one too. Okay. Our criticism, uh, his in particular, coming from the restaurant design world, had to do with the design where you sat. You know, we thought that um, those tables were a little um, underwhelming, sort of like in the middle of nowhere, not enough of them. Um, and the bar area, we, we sat at the bar. Um, it, I don't know. It could have been better. It could have been better design. Didn't Paul say something about the bottles that we were in were the window at or something? We were looking a lot of stainless steel and a lot of bottles that were between where you sit and the outside. So it's nice to be able, if you're sitting at a bar and there's the window over there, you know, you want to be able to see the outside or at least right. have some sort of view. We were sort of just looking at these bottles and stainless steel uh, equipment in uh, in front of these beautiful windows. and. Um, so the ambiance was not the so. Ambiance was a little, yeah. Did you think it was loud? I didn't notice that, and I'm really oh. I am kind of sensitive to that, but I didn't. Well, maybe because you guys are sitting really close. Nellie <laughs> uh, and I were sitting across from each other, so that could yeah. be. But the food was. I thought the food was good, and I would give. You know, I would go back again. Okay. I think, yeah. Um, and we. Oh, you were good. Well, we both were in Spanish Springs, uh, Ooh. for their thirtieth celebration yeah. we talked about it earlier that there's this big 30th anniversary celebration and we met each other we stumbled upon each other there, <laughs> you with your group of friends it was just me and my husband yeah yeah what'd you think it was i mean it was fun we just got there in time to listen to music we didn't we actually didn't really walk around the circle or anything yeah. uh -huh. it was all right yeah i thought it was good yeah. i like the fact that there was like different venues for bands like right so we went to like one that was down the street and it was acoustic blues i think was the name uh, so it was just a little more toned down. They had seating there. I thought it was really nice. Um, we did walk around, and you know they have all the vendors. We did buy a couple things. Oh, yeah, okay. like uh, so it was very nice. It was nice and simple. And it was they had the Corvettes. A lot of people from the Corvette Club were there. So if you like looking at cars, they were kind of cool. Um, and it wasn't as jammed like people said. Right. Oh, I don't want to go to that festival. It's going to be jammed. It wasn't bad. Yeah. It was. It was nice. We we were able to find the parking pretty easy, but we went later in the day. Yeah. Um, the other thing is you're you're start or you're not starting a club, but you're joining a new club in your village. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. Um, you know, if you just keep your ears out and look at the Facebook groups and talk to people, I mean, I got we got invited to join this club. Uh, it's called the Foodie Club. It's in Lake Denham, so it's going to be about forty people, some couples, some singles. Do you have to live in Lake Denham to join? Well, she. I think this might be her first oh. foray into it. Okay, but if you but you have to be invited. Yeah, or I mean, I could probably. <laughs> you could sponsor me? Invite. Okay. Yeah, probably. Does that mean I have to cook? Oh, bring Okay. <laughs> you could bring something from your culture. I, I think could. people would love that. Actually, I can make, there's a couple things I can make. There's a soup. The Persian soup is called ashrashte and Ooh. cutlet, which is like a meat patty sort of thing. But anyway, you anyway, tell me more about so your cool. culture. That's <laughs> cool. Um, every culture has cutlets. And you know what every culture has is some kind of meat or protein wrapped in some kind of dough. Yes, like a dumpling of something. Or ravioli or dumpling. <laughs> Do they have that in um, something in dough? No? Okay. Anyway, so it's fun. It's like you're supposed to bring something from either your hometown or from your culture, and you bring it, and there's going to be 40 people, and you get to sample like different kind of things. Okay. So I think I'm going to maybe make lasagna, yeah. because I think that that's something that not everybody makes well. Makes. Period. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> But take a nod to my Italian side. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we also had a response for a viewer question about parking. We have kind of a response. Yeah, we have kind of a response. Somebody asked a question, you know, what's the on-street parking regulations in the villages? And I did um, send a note to, and I did ask of the district, what's the rules? And they asked me what the address you're asking about. <laughs> So I sent a few, I uh, sent a few addresses and he, the basic answer is, um, you need to check with your village, with your district, because we have the, all the districts, we have like four, over 14 districts now. Right. And also the town might have regulations. So we which live, town are you? I'm wild. Are you? I'm in Leesburg. Leesburg. Okay. And you're Wildwood. There's also Lady Lake. Um, right. Uh, so 
you need to check with your district, find out what district, I, I believe I'm in 14, I think. Um, and you need to check with you, the town because they might both have regulations. Okay. Um, and certainly we want to know what kind of vehicle you're talking about. Is yeah. it over a certain pound or, you know, AKA borderline commercial, there's regulations with regard to yeah, that. There's, there's definitely regulations rules. with regard to, are you talking about a car or a boat? You know, there's like, there's yeah. a lot going on. So you got to ask a specific question to your district and your town. Okay. Um, also, they uh, had just announced that Fred, and I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but the CEO of FMK, Kar Karimpur, I think, Karimpur. <laughs> um, that he was named the Businessman of the Year by Sumter County. So yeah. that's that's big news. Yeah, they've been opening a lot. Um, I also went for the first time, one of my friends introduced me to Garvino's. Mm -hmm. Why, have you been there? I've been inside. Yeah, it's, it's really cute. nice. It's cute. It's at Lake Sumter. And on Fridays, there's um, someone who plays music, his name is Dale. Dumpo. Yes. He's good. Everybody I've loved him, him and He's would dance. Good. It's a very cute wine wine bar to go to. It's not super cute. And it's a cigar bar. And a cigar bar. But yeah. they have like a separate room for smoking. Like, yeah. Like, it's not out in the... Yeah. Regular. It's like enclosed. But yeah. that was like a fun little find. I would say that's a best kept secret. That's a good secret. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is, a, it is it's very nice. And I found that the wine in there, you think because it's a wine bar, um, might be a little snooty. I think it's... They have all kinds of well-priced wines. And I like the way they have it organized. Mm -hmm. And they have like yeah. a couple little snacks, like a charcuterie yeah. little board and, and thing. like gifts, nice gifts. Oh yeah, they did, mm -hmm. they had fun gifts. Um, I, I don't know, should I tell my cabaret story or is that, skip that one. <laughs> I was just gonna say, my friend invited me to go to the show Cabaret. It was like a fundraiser and I thought it was the actual show Cabaret because it is good playing. But when I went, it, the fundraiser was like a cabaret style. So it was at the Savannah Center. You had tables. You could bring food, wine, whatever yeah. you wanted. It was a table of 10. And um, it was really funny because we're sitting there and there's a woman. Uh, they're all, she knew everybody, but two older ladies that were older than I were like ones my, around my mom's age. And, you know, kind of like really very friendly, you know, friendly, but, you know, whatever. And when Clark, Berrios came out, the singer, like he does like Frankie Valley, whatever. She was like, woo, woo, woo. And it was just so funny. Like we were just like, we need to calm her down because all, all the ladies go crazy for him. That's Have you ever seen him perform? I've seen him. I got to take a closer look, I think. I didn't yeah. know. I had never seen him perform. I mean, he was good, but I didn't know that the ladies all go crazy for him. Nope. So it was kind of inter interesting. Um, and then I did something for the first time yesterday. I went with my um, special friend um, uh, to Shooter World. Uh, it was the first time I ever wow. shot a handgun. Wow. How'd it go? How'd you like it? He said I did well. I, w I walked in and it's, you know, you it put, noisy? it's noisy. Yeah. You have to go through uh, like a video stuff and sign things and blah, blah, blah. And then you choose a gun. He chose, I think it was a Beretta, so I don't know, and um, I don't know <laughs> something he was used to using, and um, you put the earplugs in, and you walk in, it's still, like, I would jump every time someone would, and he's oh. like, are you going to be okay? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I can do it, I can do it, you know. Yeah. So he's showing me how to hold it, and, you know, we put the target up, and the first time I hit it, I, like, scream. I, like, <laughs> did <you change laughs> I did, I went, woo! Like, <laughs> You're, I, you know what? I don't know. You're just not expecting whatever it is. But then, you know, I started because he's like, it's a push pull and all of that. But it was, it was, it was fun. It was interesting. And I'd like to. Would you do it again? I would do it again. Yes. Okay. I want to be better. Yeah. Good. I yeah. mean, I don't know if I need like a conceal license, but I'd like to, to be better. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, have you ever shot a gun? Not since I was a kid. Like when I when we were kids, like my grandparents lived up in the country and they had um, the little rifles and we Ooh. would shoot like cans and stuff like that. Um, so, but I haven't shot a gun since then. I mean, okay. you know, it's something to consider definitely. Yeah. definitely. And I know, I do know other people who go to Shooters World. And there were and, a lot of people there. We went early. It. Yeah, they love it. We so. went like when it first opened and the parking lot was like half full. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> it's a very, it's a big hobby. Yeah. For many people. And there were so many types of guns <laughs> there but anyway it was interesting um so the other thing is the
the senior games, yeah. the Villages senior games villages is coming. Senior games. It's kind of a big deal. It is. We have a lot of, you know, competitive. Yeah, very people, competitive yes. people. Yeah, so. Um, and that's in April, but the registration starts February 1st. Mm -hmm. So if you're a competitor, or pop in. To, or just want to see, <laughs> you know, where you are, where you lie with your peers, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, there's a Starry Starry Night. Um, that is February 3rd from 6.30 to 8.30 at, from the Village's Astronomy Club at uh, Truman Center. And so they set up their uh, telescopes. Yeah, telescopes. I'm it. like, what is that thing called? So you can use other people's telescopes and look at certain like, I, constellations. And I planets. think they, they say the seven sister star clusters, galaxies, uh, cool. the great Orion. So if you're into yeah. that, I think um, that'd be interesting. I'm definitely fascinated with that. I love the fact that we can see the launches, you know, even though Cape Canaveral is an hour away. I love the fact that if you look in the eastern sky, you know, you can see the launches when they come. Okay. It's really cool. Um, this weekend, there's also the chili cook-off, mm -hmm. uh, February 3rd at Lake Sumter. And it's also a craft beer festival. So mm. I think that'll bring a lot of people. Sounds good. Saturday the 3rd, 10 to 4. Yeah. At Lake Sumter. That sounds like fun. Um, there's also the strawberry festival coming up at the end of the month. Did you go last year? I didn't, but I remember that it was, the what I heard, it was jammed. Super crowded. Yeah. Super crowded. Um, but I didn't it, go either, but I heard the same I heard thing. It was wonderful, though. Yeah. I, I do know there's a pie eating contest. <laughs> I think that would be fun to watch. Like, see how many pies you can eat? I don't know if it's how fast you eat it or how many you can eat. Whoa. But that could be mm. interesting. Because the village just loves their festivals. There's usually a festival every month. Absolutely. Um, mm. And polo season is starting. Mm -hmm. um, and you can start getting your season passes. But polo season, when's polo season? So it's uh, in the spring and then in the fall. They don't do it in the dead of the summer and with the winter. Um, but um, yeah, you can get a you can get a season pass, or you can go um, just twenty dollars at the gate as well. Um, I am a big fan of polo because I used to live up in Polo Ridge, so it was something that we we kind of did take advantage of. Um, I haven't gone to a game. It's yes. fun. Yeah. It's really fun. The announcer is very good at explaining. Like, so that even if you're new to polo, you understand what's going on. It's very fun. And when the horses, like when they run past you, if you're up front, you know, you can feel the ground Ooh. moving under your feet. And you Do can, you like, dress up? You can. And we will. Like, well, I, I'm organizing something <laughs> for my golf group. And we're going to reserve a spot. So if you want to reserve like a sideline tailgating spot for you and your friends, um, you can for like it's it's like two hundred fifty dollars. So if you have like twenty five or fifty people, that's you can get as many as fifty. Um, it's only like five dollars a person to get that, but you still have to pay the twenty dollars at the gate to get in. But you can drive your golf cart up there. You can put out your spread. You bring your own. You know, is it an all day thing or is it a few it's hours? Hours. Okay. It's hours. I mean, you so gates open at one thirty on the Fridays. The polo matches at three. I want to say it I don't, lasts at least an hour or two, and then you can hang out after. So we can make it a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like fun. It is fun. Um, and then the just the last couple things are uh, for my golf cart. I finally, my friend Brian, who does DK um, custom carts, uh, put the lashes on my, head, <laughs> on my headlights, and um, he's installing the golf bag holder for me. Necessary. And he did the bright light in the front. I know it blinds some people, but it's very dark at night mm -hmm. here. Yeah, you, could, you, you put it on when you need to and turn it off when yeah. you don't. So I know when you're driving down a road and somebody does have that bright light, it could be a little, like, uh, disorientating. But yeah. when, so in some spots, you need it. Yeah. Um, and, like, a little decal that have the, the kiss lips on it. So we'll see. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, there was like some real estate news of like what's going yeah, on. What did you find out? Um, the Benderson Development Real Estate, uh, their real estate investor um, announced that they were, they purchased, what was it, 3,400 acres uh, in uh, Sumter County. And they did it in conjunction with, in partnership with the villages. So mm -hmm. some, something will be going on down the road. So oh, we'll see. We'll see. Interesting. And that's kind of it. All right. That's it for now. Yeah. Yeah. So don't forget, please uh, subscribe and uh, like our channel. It really helps us, encourages us to do what we're doing and bring this content to you. We hope you like it. So 
We'll see you out on the lanai. See you on the lanai. Soon. Bye. Okay, bye.